everyone, the Snowman here, and today I want to preview the Monte Carlo Masters 1000 tournament this week in Monte Carlo. It's the first big clay event for the men in 2019. Rafael Nadal, the defending champ, and there's a lot of good storylines, a lot of good potential matchups, so let's dive into this draw. Looking now at the top section of the draw, and before we talk about who's in this field, let's talk about who's not going to be playing at Monte Carlo. Some big names missing. Uh, Roger Federer is not playing at Monte Carlo. He will be, though, at Madrid in about a month's time and playing Roland Garros this year. So uh, Fed will be at a couple of clay events this season. No Juan Martin Del Potro, he's still rehabbing his knee injury, and we're also without a couple of big servers, Kevin Anderson and John Isner. All right, so let's look at this first quadrant of the draw. You've got Novak Djokovic. It's a pretty tough draw for Novak. Uh, he's coming off a very uninspiring month of March in the United States. He lost in the fourth round of Miami to Roberto Bautista Agu. And then before, he just didn't look like himself at Indian Wells. A third round exit thanks to the veteran German Philipp Kohlschreiber. And there's a good chance Joker could see Kohlschreiber again as his first opponent at Monte Carlo. So that's a little tricky. Uh, you also have Joe Willy Sanga lurking for uh, Djokovic, who's coming off a great week in Marrakesh, where he beat Kyle Edmund, uh, a player that Sanga could play in the second round. So there's some uh, a quick turnaround there with those two guys. You also have the 10 seed, the young Russian player, Daniil Medvedev, and Stefano Tsitsipas, the 6 seed. It's not an easy draw for Joker, and um, Tsitsipas, he's quietly number 4 in the race to London points right now. After the big three, Tsitsipas is having the best season in 2019. Uh, semifinals at the Australian Open, a title in Marseille, a finals appearance in Dubai. Uh, like Joker, though, very poor form for the Greek freak at Indian Wells, at Miami. Um, as for his clay game, made the final in Barcelona last year, but for the, the three clay Masters 1000 events, Monte Carlo, Madrid, and Rome, he's never been past the second round. So this is uncharted territory for Tsitsipas. He's trying to make a deep run here, and it's it's going to be tough for him. Headlining section number two in Monte Carlo is the number four seed, Dominic Team, my favorite player to watch on clay. He's a true artist, and the Prince of Clay finally bringing in some serious momentum from the hardcore season the last couple of months. Uh, his first Masters 1000 title at Indian Wells beat Roger Federer in a fantastic final where he just overpowered him. Uh, we know how good team is on clay. The last three French Opens, he's semifinals, semifinals, final. And in the last couple of Madrid Opens, he's made the finals there, losing to Sasha Zverev last season. Uh, hasn't had as much success, though, in Monte Carlo at this particular event. We still know he has the artillery, though, on both wings to blast opponents off the court, especially, uh, you know, look for huge top spin from team. The RPMs are off the charts. Him and Nadal both. Uh, if it's him and the Joker, though, in the semifinals here in the top half of the, the bracket, I'd probably give the slight edge to the Austrian, but it could be tricky for him to navigate this draw because team could see the 16 seed David Goffin in the third round, and Goffin actually holds a 7-3 overall advantage against team, uh, including 2-2 two two on clay, so no gimme there. And we're also going to see some supreme thumpers of the ball in this quarter. The 8 seed, Karen Hatchinov. Uh, the 12 seed, Nikolaj Basilishvili. And then the Hungarian, Marcin Fucevic. If I could only watch one first round match of this event, I'm picking Fucevic against Basilishvili. That's going to be awesome. Uh, Fucevic has had some great thrillers lately against both Stan Wawrinka and Roger Federer. It's always physical, always grueling with the Hungarian. So uh, absolutely sign me up for that one. Quarter number three now, no real heavy favorite in this section. You do have the finalist from last year at Monte Carlo, the five seed Kane Shikori. You were also seeing uh, number three, Alexander Zverev, who got upset very early this week in Marrakesh. He's not in the best of form right now. Uh, there's also a trio of savvy vets I'm going to keep an eye on. You've got Jill Simone, Fernando Verdasco, and Fabio Fonini. All expert clay quarters. They've got a combined 17 of their 29 career titles are on the surface of clay. So uh, all those vets have a chance. What excites me most about, though, this section is the potential second round clash between Sasha Zverev and Felix Auger Aliasim. Auger had a sensational month of March. The 18 year old Canadian broke through. He's breaking age records left and right. And at Indian Wells, he took out a red hot Stefano Citi Pass 6 4, 6 2. And he lost a really tough heartbreaker to Nishioka in the third round of Indian Wells. But he comes back in Miami, has to play qualifying. He wins seven matches in Miami, uh, beats several quality opponents, including Borna George, charged to the semifinals where he finally fell to the hot serving John Isner. But the sky is the limit for Oje Aliasime. He's 6'4, uber athletic, great movement. 
Uh, he's so hard to hit through him. His backhand stretch pass on the run, he can just hit some crazy shots. Uh, he's got all the tools, though, in the toolbox. And uh, if he can beef up the serve, I think he's going to be at least a top five player at some point in his career. Probably going to win multiple majors, too, if he keeps this up. He is just skyrocketing up the rankings right now. He is definitely the the flavor of the week, though. He is the hot player on tour right now, so look out for uh, the young Canadian. Section number four here, we got to tip our hat to the master. The king of clay, the two seed, Rafael Nadal, going for his unprecedented 12th career title at Monte Carlo this week. Uh, he's 18-1 and one in his last 19 matches at this particular event. 68-4 and four all time at Monte Carlo. And uh, get this for a stat, nobody's got more than 10 career titles at any event all time. Roger Federer, his most career titles at a particular event, nine. Nobody else has more than nine. Rafa, though, has 11 titles here at Monte Carlo, 11 titles at Barcelona, and 11 titles at the French Open. So he's going for number 12 here at Monte Carlo. And I read an interesting art article by Craig O'Shaughnessy on uh, the ATP Tour's website uh, at the big clay tournaments, including Monte Carlo. Even when Rafa is down love 30 in service games, he still holds 50% of the time. So it's nearly impossible to break him on clay. We know how he can command the court with his forehand from the back, the RPMs he puts on the ball, the spin and bounce of the clay. It's so difficult to deal with. Um, just good luck to the rest of the field in terms of breaking him, in terms of beating him up on the clay, because we know how difficult that is. But like Joker though, it is a pretty tricky draw for Rafa here at Monte Carlo. Could be Roberto Bautista Agu in the second round. He's number nine, by the way, in the race to London. Doing very well this season is the Spaniard. Uh, Nadal could also see Grigor Dimitrov in the third round, a player who he played in the semifinals of this event last year. Could also be Denis Shapovalov, another young Canadian like FAA uh, in the third round for Rafa. Shapo's coming off an awesome run in Miami where he made his third uh, career Masters 1000 semifinal appearance. So he's a bit hot right now as well. Plenty of guys, though, who love the clay in this section. you got the 11 seed Cecchinato, uh, Stan Wawrinka, Laszlo Jerry, and, of course, up top, the 7 seed Marin Cilic. So, a lot of fun, but, of course, the man with the target on his back, the player to beat, going to be Rafael Nadal. So, Rafa definitely going to be the heavy, and I mean heavy favorite at this event, but, of course, anything goes. That's why they play the games on clay and not on paper. Uh, if you enjoyed this video, though, please subscribe to the Snowman Sports Media. Give me a thumbs up, leave a comment, and, uh, yeah, thank you so much. I'll be back very soon with more tennis, basketball, and soccer content here on the Snowman Sports Media.